Hello, everyone. Welcome to our session tonight. It is another episode of Ask Julie Anything, and tonight we are going to be talking about wellness for your animals. We're going to talk about things like Wellness 101, tips you can do in your home today to improve your animal's health, ways that you can prevent things like disease, all kinds of stuff, all that good stuff we're going to cover tonight. We've got Dr. Barry Sands here with us this evening. Hi, Dr. Barry. Hi. Thanks for joining us. And as always, Julianne Lee, thanks for being here as well, Julie. You're welcome. I'm pretty excited. Oh, me too. Um, so the session's going to run for about an hour. If you have a question regarding or related to the topic tonight, please put it in the Q&A area. It's at the bottom of your screen. And um, the chat is where we can all hang out, have a little bit of back and forth and, uh, and, and discuss during the, the session. So uh, without further ado, can everyone hear me? Rebecca, good. Hello. Nice to see everyone. Hi, Donna. Good. Everyone can hear us. That's excellent. And just make sure that everybody's that's on because more there's so many people on the, on Facebook like live right now. Yes. Make sure that they're able to put it into like the questions so that they know too. Yeah, I'll monitor the questions on Facebook. Yeah. Do the best I can there. And if you want to join us live on the meeting, I'll put the link to come and join us on Zoom live um, on Facebook in a couple minutes. So to start off the session, Dr. Beery, could you tell us a little bit about yourself, um, where you currently practice, where you started, and what kind of started you on this journey? Uh, sure, I'd love to. I feel like we need a little bit more than an hour for that, but <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, I, uh, tell me a little bit about myself. So I am a uh, native New Yorker. If anybody is from New York, hi. Uh, moved out to San Diego probably about 23 uh, years ago and started practicing at a emergency critical care practice. And I've been doing emergency critical care for the last about 24 years. And I'm part of the emergency critical care team. And um, there's really nothing that I haven't seen, at least I don't think so. Uh, to deal with on an emergency basis. And I have always had an affinity for the natural sciences and, the, and the, the nature of the world, so to speak, and the connection that we have with our mind, body, spirit. And through that, it led me to the opportunity to become a holistic practitioner, where I became certified in acupuncture through the IVIS, the International Veterinary Acupuncture Society where I got my training and then did all this additional training after that um, with herbs and energy work and um, rehabilitation and nutrition. And I opened up my holistic practice in about 2003 uh, in the same hospital that I work in now, which is a specialty hospital where we do emergency and have criticalists and uh, internists, surgeons, radiologists, cardiologists, and a plethora of people there that are working. You know, plus the holistic department. And so it's a beautiful balance of this yin and yang energy that I strive to incorporate into my daily being in, in an overall co comprehensive wellness attitude. So it gives me a lot of um, joy to be able to treat something in an emergent situation using the best that Western medicine has to offer and then create the continued wellness and the preventative care through my holistic practice. And that's the beauty, that's the biggest integrative beauty that I can, that I can think of. So, you know, that, what led me into holistic medicine uh, was just basically the desire to heal and to create wellness. Because that's not something that you can do in Western medicine modalities. Um, I, I find it's mostly sort of symptomology and band-aid therapies, um, except for, you know, the beauty of surgeries and emergency care. Um, you know, I, I love Western medicine and I love Eastern medicine, and it's really the blend of the two that really makes me passionate, you know, on all different levels. So um, I don't know if that answered uh, your question. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. It's, it's very cool that you have the best of both worlds. 
at your fingertips and can kind of work with one or the other depending on a case by case basis, I guess. Yeah, it's, I think it's great. Yeah, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll share with you too, my most recent over the last six years, um, because I was seeing so many people in the emergency room day after day, year after year, that were so um, struggling with themselves and their and their lives and their families and their relationships. Because when you when you work in an emergency room, people come in in a very heightened state of of um, uh, fear or anxiety, panic, uh, and everything comes into play when you're when you're in that situation so i learn a lot about the people that come in with their animals sometimes i get more history from them as people than i can get about their animals in the first few minutes because they just want to tell me everything about their lives and you know what is falling apart and you know and so our, our role as veterinarians is not to um fix their problems it's to help their animals but help them cope with everything that they go through and so that led me to want to work with people in a way that I could be impactful and have a meaningful um, relationship with them. And so I became a certified trainer for the Institute of Heart Math. And I don't know if any of you out there are familiar with the Institute of Heart Math, but they have a beautiful uh, website, um, heartmath.org or heartmath.com. And it's an institution that has spent the last 30 years researching the science behind the intuitive nature of the heart and how it affects our physiology. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, it allowed me to you know, learn the techniques and, and teach people how to manage their stress levels, regulate their autonomic nervous systems, get into their hearts, find coherence is a, a word that we use. And you know, we could talk about that throughout the hour. Um, and also what I realized is that when a person is in that state of alignment and coherence, our energies will flow smoothly onto everybody around us. And that includes our animals. And that's one way that we can create that wellness in our pets by creating the wellness inside of ourselves. We, we hear, oh, sorry, go ahead, Julie. Can you um, put that in the chat? Stephanie, the, the absolutely heart math. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, we hear this time and time again, when vets or guests come on and chat with us that they always say when people come to me, they're in this desperate state. And, and quite often, that is also affecting their animal or playing a part in how their animals feeling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And on, on more ways than one. Um, and that's interesting that you bring that up because, um, you know, we all know that our sh levels of stress and anxiety will translate into our pets or transfer into our pets where they feel anxious. And, and I think that's more known than any other phenomenon. But interestingly, what I have seen in my, in my practice in the, on the emergency room that there is a very uncanny relationship between certain very specific disease phenomenons between humans and the, the pet. It's, and it has usually been between the dogs and the human or the, the one that the, human, the, the dog was most bonded to, whichever human that was in the family. Um, not so much cats because they have their own psychic agenda, but dogs are very much invested in us, you know, in our wellness, in our emotions, in our business. And when I mean by specific things and uncanny situations, I've had many clients where the animal has uh, a, a certain type of a heart disease that the owner has. Like this one has atrial fibrillation, the owner has atrial fibrillation. Uh, the child had a brain tumor, the dog has a brain tumor. They have leukemia, the dog has leukemia. Um, I had a woman with an, her dog had an immune mediated thrombocytopenia, which is a crisis when you have very low platelets and you start to hemorrhage because of that. And in a consultation with the owner, when she was visiting her dog, 
she asked me a question. She was brave enough to ask this question. And I was honored that she felt that way. And she said, um, you know, Dr. Sands, do you think it's possible that I gave the disease to my dog? And I'm like, well, what do you mean by that? And she said, well, I have a new immediate thrombocytopenia and I've been struggling with that. So do you think he has it because of me? I said, well, that's a really interesting question. And that's a dialogue that I'm you know, willing to have and investigate. And so, you know, that whole theory of biofield transference of, of energies um, is a new science that is being researched, at least trying to be researched. And I'm hoping to be part of that and am, you know, working on how we can, you know, how, how can we prove that? You know, it, it's an energetic situation and it's not the easiest thing to be able to scientifically put a value upon an energy transfer. Um, but, you know, with enough information, I think that the science of that conversation can, can can broaden to a, a deeper scope. Have you heard of um, Dr. Joe Dispenza? Mm -hmm, absolutely. Because yeah, he's, yeah. he's done some really incredible, like when you talk about heart-brain coherence, yep. he's done some incredible brain scans, actual brain scans. And I was listening to one of his, his podcasts and he was saying that he hired all of these um, um, neuroscientists and they were in the back and there was like it was like these massive uh screens showing the brain scans and all these people were hooked up for this for these scans and he said he was trying to explain to the scientists what were going on what was going on but they were kind of like oh well they were just like they weren't really paying attention to what he was saying because he was saying get ready because you're going to see some pretty weird <laughs> weird stuff right and um, anyway, so he hooked everybody up and he was doing this specific meditation that he does. And then all of a sudden he gets this thing, this call in his, in his earbuds saying, you better get back here. These scientists are losing their minds. Yeah. And so he runs back and he, he's like, what's he, they, they, they couldn't see the audience. They thought the people were actually having seizures right. by, by what their brains were doing. And it was literally the opposite like they were like changing dna and they were changing neural pathways and so just by connecting to the heart right like where he talks about the heart and brain coherence so right yeah i'm, I'm very very familiar with yeah with his work and and his science and i've been to his workshops and really oh my god that's yeah, so cool. I've, I've been in conversation with him and yeah so we know each other and oh yeah, it's a, it's a, um, yeah, it's fabulous that he's doing, he's able to do that science. Yes. Uh, so that has been, you know, the, co the coherence link and what's happening to tailgate on, on your comment when these people are on such a, in a, such a state of deep, deep connection to the heart that allows your brain to be in absolute alignment with everything inside of your brain that you shift into a, a, a gamma state. Yeah. Right now we're, we're in beta, you know, we're thinking, we're talking and we're listening. Um, but there's something beyond, you know, that the, the deep, deep meditative and it, it's that gamma frequency where you're like in connection to that quantum field of information. Quantum and field. when that yeah. happens, that's when you get those immediate biological upgrades. You know that yeah. epigenetic shifts the wellness. Yeah. So, and it it and for me it just resonates so so much with me because having a clinic and working you know whether you know because we were in like a integrative clinic we would have emergencies coming in all the time like hemorrhagic gastritis and you know they have like like they're bleeding to death pretty much and when you are, or, or I remember a dash hound that came in that was, you know, stung by a bee and everybody's running around for crash kits because you couldn't even see this dog's eyes. His face was so swollen and it's yeah. it was blue and whatever. And I've seen homeopathy like, like create miracles as everything else is getting ready. So yes, integrative, but I'm there giving them stuff 
while everybody else is getting stuff ready, giving that, getting IV fluids ready, getting this ready, and I'm just giving remedies as we're waiting, right? right? And so when you think of that energetic part of that remedy, shifting something from not going into shock or stopping a hemorrhage so you can get the fluids right. into them it's it, it and i was i've always been so fascinated by quantum physics because of right. that and that you know like a long time ago 1993 and um and now with the science showing this it's so exciting for me like uh -huh. for me personally like listening to you i just get i get so excited because everybody you know everybody just assumes that homeopathy is a sugar pill and has no you know therapeutic value at all well that's a that's a conscious that's a conscious shift you know it's a hard thing to wrap your head around um to think that energy energy i think in general is a hard thing to wrap your, your head around when you are so in a three-dimensional world that everything is appears so solid and to imagine that this is really not what you think it is you know, we're not solid beings. We are energetic beings. You know, yeah. filled with billions and trillions and trillions and trillions of atoms and molecules that are, you know, resonating around each other, protons and electrons that never really touch. And if we, um, you know, just the, if you could see that, well, I mean, we could feel that. We can't see it necessarily unless we're in those states of, of meditation, perhaps, but you can feel it when you yeah. tingle. When you get that sense of knowing, that aha moment, when something rings true to you, you maybe get, get some goosebumps, you just know that something's right. That's that feeling, and mm -hmm. that comes from the heart. And so that makes sense. The homeopathy makes sense in the quantum world because yeah. you, you treat the energy with energy. And, that's a, and it can be a much faster result when you're oh. doing that because it's frequency modulations. Yeah. You know, and, and if it resonates, it changes. When you were talking just now, when you're like that tingling, that no, when you were talking and I was like really listening to you, I had to take a breath, right? Because it was like, and that's like, it, it's even learning what, what is the, feel, like recognizing the feeling, right? Like us actually, like, and I think we, I think our, our animals teach us that. And that's why I think what you're doing is so fascinating because what you can feel when you're with your dog. Mm -hmm. is a is and when you're really just with your dog or i'm just with my horse or i'm just with my cat or whatever it's like they take you into a different dimension yeah because there's yeah. there's there's not so much thought there right more the heart heart to heart right the heart to heart it's always a heart to heart conversation you know with your dog with your cat I mean, you just look into those eyes and you just every at least I mean, in my experience, well, it doesn't even matter if it's my dog or not. Honestly, every dog I look into, when I look into those eyes, there's that deeper, deeper love connection. And whether it's an animal that's in need, um, that comes in through the through my practice, whether it's emergency or, or you know, that walks in for preventative health care or my own pets, you know, you, you look into the eyes and you immediately connect with your heart. Yeah. And, you know, I had a... I had one of my um, colleagues, I was on the emergency service that day and, I, and a dog came in and Ona said he was painful, but she didn't know where and something happened when he was outside and she doesn't know what. And so I'm, I, you know, I, I go to this little dog and he's on the table and I'm you know, sort of checking his energy field because that's always what I do when they first come in the ER. And one of the, my colleagues said, she said, oh, I wish, I wish animals can talk. And I was like, well, I mean, they can. You just have to listen differently, right? Yeah. And, and you, I get senses of things from them, and they do. They do speak, and they speak to me in in imagery, you know, that comes through. I, you know, and the words are in my own head, but they, it's images that show up, and and you know, so you know, tell me about what happened. And sometimes it's clear, sometimes it's not, sometimes, but it doesn't matter. It's it's based on a feeling. You know that I have, and it, and it just it resonates, and and that's the language that we all have with each other as well. You know, when, when oh, we yeah. walk, you're right. When we walk into a room that 
you say there was a lot of negative energy flowing around and you walk in and then everyone stops talking. You know that, you know what just was happening in there before you walk in, you can feel that. You can feel those bad vibes or, you know, lower resonant energy vibes, or you can feel the really high, exhilarating, joyous moments when you walk in. And not only can we feel it, but we can, we can put input into that field around us because we as energetic beings, and especially our hearts, we emit a, a huge electromagnetic field from our heart space that surrounds our entire bodies, almost like a, and it's been measured and taken pictures of and data extrapolation, mathematical terms. It looks like a, a toroid field where the energy is just coming from the, from the center up and around like, a, like an apple and a core. And that field that we admit can reach itself out at least measurably by nine feet but it's much further than that i've had you know many people say oh i you know 50 feet out or you know but we've measured it with magnetometers to to come out at least by nine feet so we have that effect and the question is what are you putting in that field that's in you that's around you how are you feeding the field and what are you choosing to feed it yeah. and the information that's in that field is your emotions and your thoughts are into that field yeah yeah, well, there's a there's a thing with horses called equine facilitated psychotherapy, and um, they know that with horses, where where you can walk out, and every horse is different, so that's why they know it's it's got nothing to do with oh, it's just horses. Where you can you can walk to the side of the horse, and and you literally can say to them, "Let me know when I'm getting to your energy field." And you'll hit a spot and they'll put their head up, right? And they'll, they'll look at you and it's sort of like, then you ask if you can come farther and then they'll put their head down, start grazing again. And then when you get too far, they'll pick up their, and it's not like they're just looking at you. Cause I can, you can walk right up to a horse and they don't even lift their heads often, but it's, it's almost like you can feel their, what well, they call it their heart energy, right? That the energy where they are, it's their space and they, yeah they connect with each other and, and they let each other know when they can get into each other's space and when they can't. And it's, it, it is, it's just, it's incredibly, incredibly fascinating. Yeah. You know, if they say that, um, you know, the thoughts, when we speak about things like intention or even manifestations, you know, the, your thoughts carry the electrical field out and your feelings carry that magnetic field out. So when you put your thoughts and your feelings in alignment into the field, there's this electromagnetic frequency that comes out. And that is pretty much your intentions. When you want to achieve something, yeah. you think mm -hmm. about what it is you want, you feel, you feel it happening, and then together that signal goes out into the universe, mm -hmm. into that, you know, that, that quantum matrix, if you will. And, yeah. um, and then things start to happen that, that are in resonance with that frequency because that energy is speaking to energy. You know, and, and it's a fascinating, fascinating science. And I feel the more people, you know, start to get familiar with it or get comfortable with it, and it's not so woo-woo anymore because it is very scientific. It then, is. Yeah, then it brings it, it brings it home, you know, which is inside your heart. And, and how we, and we have a profound effect on the animals and the people in our, that we surround ourselves with. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, we can. Um, we can generate, we can go into coherence and bring our animals into a state of coherence and in alignment with their physiology based on their resonance with us. And, and I, yeah, and I feel like even to, just to be more mindful of that, like, what do I want to achieve for myself? Mm -hmm. I can achieve the same wellness for my animals. By doing the same thing, like by, by, by your thought and your heart coherence you can do it with like you can bring that onto your animal yep that's yeah yeah they've done there's some beautiful studies that were shown uh with, you know in people hooked up to the monitoring equipment to because we can measure this um through technology yeah. if your if your body's in coherence or not and it, it boils down to a lot of uh, extrapolated data based upon your heart rate variability your blood pressure your heart rate uh, your skin temperature, but there's some 
um, technology out there that you can sit there in front of it. Some of this on your phone, you hook it up to your ear or it's a Bluetooth where it can tell you if you're in a heart brain coherence, you know, the conversation. Hmm? Really? Yeah. Yeah. And so you, I think that the technology is, is nice because it helps, um, you know, what you're like, okay, is, am I doing this? Not so much. Am I doing this right? But is this, is this the way I'm doing it? Is this effective? Because it does feel differently and it does carry a different frequency and energy around it. And when you can do that for yourself, then you radiate that out to the person next to you or, you know, an animal that's there with you. Like I, I, I have done these techniques in my emergency practice when I know, I mean, this was before COVID when people were allowed in the hospital yeah. and they, they come in a room and I'm ready to walk into a room with a very, very upset owner. And, you know, you can hear them either crying or screaming in the waiting room. And then they come in and before I walk through the door, you know, I would, I would ground myself. I would get into a state of, of coherence or heart brain harmony and start to radiate that out. And when I walk into the room and the, and I'm in front of the person who is, you know, tragically in a, in, out of their mind in a sense sometimes, and I just stay in there and I just breathe and I hold space and allow just for like a moment. It's, it's not a long time. It may be like 20 seconds, you know, that, that I'll do that. And then I'll introduce myself and it just, you can see the person in front of me just kind of dropping down and relaxing just a little bit so that they are starting to feel a little bit better and in more control of their emotions just because I'm standing there allowing them to, you know. Dr. Berry, I have a question. What, what sort of things can we do to help us get to that heart brain harmony state? How can we get there? Yeah, so that's, a, that's an excellent question. So when, you know, the, the, first, the first step, which is really, it's very simple. It's, it's ridiculously simple. However, it's never really easy because it's something that we have to practice and get used to. Um, and the, the first step is what, what we call heart-focused breathing, where you are in the moment of, you know, a stressful situation or in a stressor uh, based in, with that situation, you take a pause and you center your attention to, you place your attention to your heart center. And you focus the energy there. And sometimes you put your hand over your heart if it makes it better, because a lot of times we'll pay attention to where we're touching our bodies. So it makes it easier to find your heart if you're touching it. So put your hand over your heart center. And then you start breathing in and out of that space. You know, I like to imagine my, my heart having these little nostrils sometimes and so there's the breath it comes in and it comes out and it comes in and it comes out and you want to truly breathe a little bit slower and deeper than you normally would and the recommended time frame with that is about five seconds in and five seconds out and the reason that number is in, is of value is because it allows you to breathe about six breaths a minute and when we breathe less than seven breaths in one minute, all of a sudden, our sympathetic nervous system, which is our fight or flight system, takes a, a dials down and your parasympathetic system comes up online. And the parasympathetic system is your rest and digest system and that sympathetic is that fight or flight. So we wanna get out of that fight or flight mode and that simple one minute of six breaths you, you just feel completely different after you do it. And so that's the start. That's the beginning of getting into your heart to have that awareness of the breath flowing in and out because that breath, not only does it, you know, it, it, it allows you to have this mindful exchange uh, through your, the energies of your, of your body, off shifts your autonomic nervous system and you start to oxygenate better. You know, your brain is getting more oxygen, your cells are getting more oxygen, your tissue is getting more oxygen. And this, that's the very first step, just to dial down that stress response. And the more you do it, 
the easier it is to get into that state. Um, so is that, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, just start practicing. Yeah, you're right. It's, it's easy to do, but you, you have to put the, the work in. Right, and, and you know, we breathe every day. We breathe every day anyway. But we don't always take mindful breaths throughout the day. And we always, we feel that we have to set aside a time in the morning or the night where we go into meditation and we, we get comfortable and we get the music on or our blinders or our essential oils or something, some process that we feel we have to do. And if we don't do that, then we feel like we've lost the opportunity to do our meditative practice. And it doesn't have to be that way. You could be sitting in your car in traffic or at a red light and do this on the fly. You can, you can open your eyes, you can close your eyes and just take those mindful breaths and, sh and just start changing your physiology. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the next step of that to get into a coherent state is all about emotions. So um, when you are in that breathing state of being, if you can remember uh, or recall a moment in time where you felt amazing, elated, uh, joyful, loving, some feeling of care, appreciation, or gratitude, a memory that you had, you recall that memory in your mind, but you actually take the moment to feel it as we live the experience of that, of that energy. And, and then when you have that feeling inside of your heart, that's when you shift into that coherent state. And the higher amplification of that emotion is going to drive that physiology quicker and deeper. Um, but, you know, that being said, it's not an easy thing to, f when you're in the heat of the moment, in a crisis situation where you're where you're going to panic or you're going to survival or you're in a fight with you know your family or your you know your loved ones your husband or you know some something's happening it's not and it's not easy to just take yourself out of that take a breath and then feel a happy feeling or a joyful feeling and and so that's where the practice comes in because that's when it's it's most valuable. It's in those moments, you know, that we find ourselves. Francis has a question here. Is it similar to four, seven, eight breathing? Did she say four, seven, three breathing? Uh, she said four, seven, eight breathing. Oh, four, yeah. Well, um, I'm 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 a little bit familiar with that, and I think that if you're what you're referring to is a pattern of breathing, and. Um, it's, it's not exactly the same, but I feel like, and correct me if I'm wrong, that it's this, it's, the philosophy of the result is probably the same. You know, whenever we go into these breathing practices, there's really no right or wrong way to do it. And whatever fits for you, whatever comfortable for you, whatever you resonate with is, is truly what, um, you know, you should gravitate to. Um, however, <coughs> I find from, for me, the practice of this sort of one breath and, and joyful feeling, it's, it's quick. And there, the more you do it, the, not only does your, your physiology change in the moment, but you can actually reset the, the, the baseline in your brain through the neuroplasticity that takes place to not feel that way anymore like you just don't feel that way anymore in in that situation you may feel more grounded or say in the midst of an argument with your with your significant other something that would trigger you doesn't trigger you anymore and you have some sort of care understanding or compassion around the situation instead of going to a place of perhaps defensiveness or you know unrest Does, did that answer your question? <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. It's, it's about being aware and being in control. Um, yeah, definitely. Francis, did that answer your question? There's another question here from Joy. 
She said it's, oh gosh, there's a couple of comments I wanted to read too from Facebook. Um, Sharon said that her dog always knows that she's sad before she does. Mm. And Michelle also said that she's found that her boxers love her Tibetan bowl that's tuned to the heart chakra. So they, they always hang out near that and, and really, really like being close to it. So back to our, our question. Joy said, she's, it's a wonderful discussion. When treating or dealing with rescues, how can we energetically help them? Hmm. Uh, well, you know, I think the best way um, to do that with any animal that's fearful or, you know, rescue dogs in general, I, I feel, you know, they have these past experiences that usually make them um, afraid, you know, and sometimes angry, but I think most of them are, are very fearful. And the, just basically, I think to hold space, you know, to get to, to, to radiate that heart space. So when you go into that state of coherence, and, and when I say, you know, feel, get a memory that, that is joyful or amazing for you, um, what I've done in my own personal practice is that I've taken a time out to think about maybe five or six memories that I've had in my life that were just absolutely amazing. And I've written them down so that I can kind of have them like on the fly to choose from a memory to go back to. Because nothing's going to take away, say, one of my, one of my favorite personal memories is when I was um, in uh, the Bahamas in an island called Bimini, and I was swimming with wild dolphins. And that was the, one of the most magical experiences that I've had. And so I remember a moment or an interaction that I had with this one particular dolphin and how it made me feel in, in that moment. And I'll, I'll go back to that thought and that memory when I need to call on something that's going to really amplify my heart space. And when you have that joy and, and appreciation and gratitude, you take that energy and you just radiate that out. And you can even vi do visualizations where you can, it can look any, like any way you want. It can look like a tunnel or a ball of, of light or a funnel that's coming out and then it goes around the animal where now it's enveloped in this field of love and care and, and gratitude and and then just do that and sit with that that's energetically i think that they pretty probably the only way you know is to just give send that feel that love and send it and and hold it and hold space for that i um i think that what you just said was is really true because i grew up in a rescue my mom my mom rescued dogs my whole life and we had a farm so people, I mean, sometimes we had 20, 25 dogs that just lived in our house. And um, I remember my mom, someone saying to her once, she, it was like, these, these dogs, she did everything with these dogs. And sometimes the SPCAs would call and they would know that the dogs were gonna be euthanized. Like they just, they weren't gonna make it, but they had been in such horrible conditions. They would actually bring the dogs to my mom so that they could just even have two or three days of just love. And my mom would take them up and take them into her room. Sometimes she wouldn't come out for like a whole day. She would just be in the room with the dogs. And and we wound up finding, like, they would just sometimes, rather than having to call the vets to come and euthanize them, they would just die on their own, right? It would just be like this really, really cool thing. And what you just said to me made sense because when, I, when I've been watching a bit of this Joe Dispenza, he talks about, you know, how we predominantly live in our past, right? Rather than, in, in, and it's just human nature to, opt to think more about our, our negative past than, than, than our positive. And I remember, hey, it's okay. I remember my, someone saying to my mom, how come you don't like, break down and cry every time you bring these dogs in because she would get really abused dogs and she said it's not that i don't have compassion for them but i see where they're going to go right I, yeah. I, I see what their lives are going to be like so yeah. rather 
focusing on them being beaten and feeling sad for them, she would, she would just be like, you have no idea what your life is going to be like. It's right. going to be yes. amazing. So rather than going, oh, you poor little thing. And oh, how horrible. Right. Like, you know what, honey, don't worry. Your life is, you just, you just can't even imagine how great you're right. like. Well, now that that so makes sense because that's probably why a lot of them died in front of her, you know, because they, it, it was, per, it, it was permission, you know, to, to let go and to say, yeah, I, I see you and I hear you. And it's, it is going to be a wonderful place where you're going to be and it's okay to go, you know, and animals, they know that they know that. And I, I have a, a beautiful um, story that you reminded me of, I had a client of mine who just got this beautiful puppy. She's had him for about six months and he was about, you know, eight, seven, eight months old and he got hit by a car and he had significant head trauma. So he was in the hospital and he was on a ventilator and we had him on this table and he, we finally got him to a steady state of being where his heart rate was perfect, his temperature was great, his, his blood pressure was perfect, um, but he just, he wasn't breathing on his own and he wasn't very, wasn't conscious. So he's almost like a dog in a coma. And his mom really struggled about what she should do with him. Like how long do you let a dog be in a coma for? You know, and, and, and people, you know, people, some people are in comas for years, but is that is that a logistic situation for for a dog to be in and you know and an owner you know because things are you know are costly and there's quality of life questions and there's all these questions that come up around mortality for for the owners and so where her and i um this beautiful woman and i were standing on either side of her dog and we were talking because it was about the the fourth day and she was saying, well, I don't, I don't know what to do. I, I don't, I don't want to put him to sleep, but I, I don't know if I should continue because it's just this unknown. And, you know, and who knows what brain function the dog will have if he woke up. So she said, I said, I don't know. I said, why don't you, why don't you talk, talk to your puppy? And so she said to him, uh, she just gave him love and a blessing. And she said, I love you so much. And I wanna thank you for being in my life and giving me all the gifts that you have for the short time that we had together. And it's okay. And if you want to go, it's okay. And as soon as she said those words, the EKG just went flatline. It wasn't an arrhythmia. It wasn't, oh, I just got goosebumps. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, like I took like my arms. Okay. <laughs> so it, it, it so she she looked at me. I looked at her. We looked at the dog, and that was the moment he left. It was the moment the moment she gave him permission to go was the moment he 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 just he went, you know. And that's the beauty of it. That's the soul connection that we have to know that it's okay, and to give that blessing, and and in, and to. You, when you were speaking, the two things I thought of um, were the feelings, the difference between empathy and compassion. And that's, that's a, a very interesting connection to have where, you know, the, oh, you poor thing, you're, I feel so sorry for you. You know, that's our, us, you know, being empathetic, you know, to the trials and tribulations of what an animal or a human goes through. Um, I think he's beautiful. <laughs> I'm looking at your dog. He's but there's um, the empathy is 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 a good tool to use to get into the understanding of where a person or an animal is at the place that they're in, but yet it's not for us to stay in that place. At, you know, as as healers or even a friend um, or a doctor, our our role is to is to come out of that place of empathy and go into a place of compassion where we can from that place a give guidance and, and assistance from a, from a healthier more balanced point of view um because you know there's a saying that 
you know, you can't strengthen the weak by weakening the strong. And it's to be with that individual, whether it's a human or an animal, because I honestly, I feel like we're all just intermingling together. And um, you want to be to, to, to hold that space and this and, the, and that space of of love and care, compassion, gratitude, that's the energy of those higher vibrations that allows that dog to transition on his own, you know, and it allows that healing to happen, you know, in ourselves and for our pets. Very powerful. That, that was uh, very moving. Could you say that, that strength um, quote one more time for the people in the back? Sure. You cannot strengthen the weak by weakening the strong. Mm, really moving. All right, ladies, uh, I've got one more question here, and, and it's a tough one. What, if you could summarize, what are your top three or five things that, that we can start doing today to improve the health and wellness of our animals? Um, well, I think, you know, so, mm, that's a good, <laughs> my top five. Okay, so my top five is, I'm going to, I'm going to say, because we're talking about energy, I'm going to say, um, my number one is probably to find more balance in your own life and to honor your own self, to create the wellness, the mind body wellness inside of you so that you can emanate that to those around you. I think that's, I think that's the number one because it's like that oxygen mask you know, situation on the plane. You need to put the oxygen mask on first before you can help somebody else. And so we need to self care much more and then um, radiate that to our pets. The, I don't know if that's, considered two or <laughs> but um, the other one is diet is is you know what we feed what we feed our animals what we feed ourselves having them have the most cleanest you know bioavailable um, species specific diet you know that you can put in their system uh, I, the, the fourth or third is to be really mindful about healing that microbiome in the gut right and I know Julie and I talked about that a little bit and um, you, I can't say, and I don't think anyone can say enough about how important the microbiome is, you know, to our overall wellness and how we assimilate um, our nutrients that come in. Because you can eat something, but it's just going to pass and not get absorbed if your microbiome isn't isn't online. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, my my fifth one is laughter. I don't know, is laughter. It has to be laughter. Because when you when you when you create laughter in your life, your dogs will your animals feel that. They just everyone feels it. It's contagious, it's immune boosting, it prevents heart 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 disease, it, it builds resilience for you and and your pet. And and I don't I don't know if you're ever if you've seen animals in the throes of people laughing, but they are just wonky. <laughs> they just, you know, these the dogs are barking and everyone's excited. They, sometimes they, they don't know what's happening because I don't think they see us in that state of being as as, as often as they can. You know, so it's like a big party. <laughs> mm -hmm. so yeah, I think a lot of what you what you just said would be as well with me i think the i think the emotional i think the emotional diet have to be they're like the two top right like with, and diet is with microbiome i i don't see any of it not being connected right so you know i used to when i when i would do cancer courses and things like that i would just say just try and be right be just know that it's going to be okay whatever happens because your dog's not thinking the same way as you are. Your cat's not thinking the same way as you are. So it's, for me, it's about trying to remember to connect with them. So I, I would say to people, uh, your dog would rather you roll around on the floor with them than post 10 pictures on Facebook about them, right? Like actually be, actually be with them. 
Right. So that would be one is just, just the, the love and, you know, that connection and you were saying, looking in their eyes. Um, I did a, a, a lecture once about oxytocin levels, you know, and they do know that they've done like a Japanese study to prove that the oxytocin levels with a dog, you have the same pituitary loop, right? So looking, it, 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 it does huge benefits to your, to your, to your health. Absolutely. And, and not only that, but, but in the, in the most recent science, you know, over the last say 20 years, we've, we've found that the heart um, has a brain inside. It's, that's a whole other conversation that we can have another time about neurocardiology. But with these, with these, these sensory neurites that live inside the heart, they also secrete hormones and mm -hmm. it's the heart secretes oxytocin in the same magnitude that your pituitary does. Yes, it's like it's and, the loop, right? Yeah, yeah. it's, it's mm -hmm. this all, and you know, and they're, they can, and they're secreted also independently of each other. Mm -hmm. So, you know, hugs and, and gratitude to help secrete, you know, that love hormone, you know, of, that bonding hormone of oxytocin and that, and that wellness. I think so, it's so interesting because, you know, we talk about the, the, the gut brain access and the brain and the gut. And now we're talking about the brain and the heart. And then we're talking about the, like, it's just, there's, I think what we're learning is that you just can't disconnect any of it. But, but when you're talking about health, I would, I would agree wholeheartedly. It's like your heart, your emotions and your gut. So whatever you can do to, bring joy and health and and um wholeness to those three even those three things everything else connected right mm -hmm. so cool dr sands i've got there's a couple of things i'd like to read here um maureen uh has a similar a similar story to share she's watching on facebook her first dog had complications after open heart surgery and they brought her back to, to see the dog. The dog flatlined and they started to disconnect everything. I was holding her head crying saying, please no, because I wasn't expecting this outcome as even an option. And her pulse came back and she lived another day because I asked her to. It's pretty, pretty amazing stuff. Uh, yeah, Maureen, thank you, that's beautiful. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, Alicia, Alicia has another question here. Um, does Dr. Berry do phone consults? How can we connect with you, Dr. Sands? Yeah, thanks for asking that. So I do have, um, I have a website. It's drbarrysands.com. And um, at the moment, it's not live, but it will be over the next week um, or so. And there'll be an opportunity to uh, get access to having um, phone consultations, video consultations. Um, I'm planning to start introducing workshops for humans and their pets, uh, coherence training and resilience building. Uh, That's a Yeah, so that I think that'll be a, a you know a lot of fun. You know, bringing bringing the, the circle of love into <laughs> interspecies relationship. I really have goosebumps that because I think that's that is that that's so needed is mm -hmm. together, right? To do them to do them together, like to be able to help the person and their animal together is I yeah. think it's just exponentially more powerful. Yeah, because really the, the, there's such a symbiotic relationship, you know, with the, with the, with the, the human and the animal that they live with that you can't, you can't be a veterinarian, I feel, and remove the human condition around that relationship if you want this global healing to take place. You know, I mean, in the emergency room, that's different. You, you know, if you, if you, if you need surgery or if you need, you know, a blood transfusion or, you know, some medicine that's going to work fast and hard and heavy and, and save your life, that's, that's the beauty of that. But afterwards, there's the care and what's involved in that. And, and, you know, just to, um, I know we're running out of time, but I wanted to mention, I remembered uh, something I wanted to say when you were talking about animals that have cancer and it's better to love on them than to like, or post them on Facebook, it's sometimes one of the ways that we can offer the best ways to help our animals heal 
is to not consume ourselves with their problems in an emotional sense. Like not to dote on them, say, oh, my poor dog, he's dying of cancer. But, and, and to focus on the wellness aspect. Like look at the, the animal, whether it has some condition and imagine the animal in that imagery of being this vibrant, beautiful animal that is running, playing, eating, you know, rolling around. And the more you send that imagery out, the more that animal will pick it up. Yeah. Oh, I think that's the other thing that my mom would do, right? Like if they, if they came in and they were still healthy, but they'd been abused and they were skinny and they were like needing her rehabilitation, instead of crying about how they were abused, she would say to them, you just wait, just wait to see what you're going to have. Just wait to see what your future is going to be like. And she meant it because if she couldn't find a home, they just lived on our farm. Like, there wasn't there really wasn't a choice they were gonna have a nice right. life so, either way so, they were gonna have a good life <laughs> they were so she would just be like oh you know don't worry you just wait just wait to see what your life is going to be like you know and she would like you said she had compassion for what they'd gone through but she didn't she didn't dote on it she was like you, yeah you know what it's just gonna take them time they're just gonna be amazing she was so positive about the outcome you know, like it, it, it's so, yeah, it's pretty cool. People thought she was crazy, but. <laughs> but it worked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, you know, on my website, there's a lot of information too. Um, just little snippets of things I'm going to be putting out just for self-care and, you know, and, you know, humans and animals healing and cohabitating and getting in alignment with, you know, the mind, the body, the spirit. You know, so that we can be whole because I think overall people just want to feel good. You know, yeah. They just they want to feel good. Right? They want their animals to feel good. And our I think our animals want us to feel good. Yes. And our animals want us to feel good. They Absolutely. Really do. They right. they really, really do. Right. And you know, and the flip side of that before with you know us putting out our energies and creating potential disease in our pets. Yes, and, and then there is that flip side where the animal will heal the human, you know, by being part of their energy field and, and just bringing that, you know, love. I mean, there are some of those special animals that just sit there and they just, it's almost like they will that love into you. <laughs> yeah. You know? I've, I've got one more question here. Yeah. Donna's asking, what are your thoughts on, on blessing and showing gratitude? To your pet's food? Well, I think, um, you know, if you're talking about, you know, having dry food or food that, you know, kibble or food that may not be the most nutritious and you're blessing the food, I don't know if that's what you're referring to, but I think a blessing over food is always a wonderful thing. Um, blessing where it came from, whether or not that would change how um, the the structure of the food is going to be incorporated into the system. I, I, I do. I think it's impossible. No, I don't think it's impossible. I, 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 it's like saying, you know, if I'm, if I live on cardboard, but yet I believe that the cardboard has so much nutrients and that I could just eat it and sustain myself. I feel that if you believe that as a hundred thousand percent, I think that would sustain you. Um, however, that's, uh, that's not always, I don't think we exist on that level all the time. So I think blessing is, um, it's, you can't go wrong with a blessing, you know, or, or, or having gratitude for something because there's always going to be a positive effect around that in some way. Awesome. Julie, do you have anything to add? Well, just we, when I, I remember when we were talking about COVID and people not being able to get stuff and some people having to actually put their dogs back on on kibble that had been on raw and how horrible they felt and felt like they were going to kill their dog. And, and it's like in every moment, like if you, that you're doing your best, like your intention, you know, I think it, your intention is everything. And if your intention is in this moment, I'm doing the very best that I can, then you don't get filled with the guilt that keeps you stuck in something else. Right. So Exactly. You know, in that moment, if you're feeding, if you have to feed kibble and you're a diehard raw fan 
and and you're feeding kibble, but you're maybe putting some goat's milk on it or whatever. Just you're just you're just doing your best. Yeah. When you do that, that's going to evolve into getting to where you want to go again, or just that intention of of letting your animals know that you're that you're trying as hard as you possibly can. I think that's I think right. that's a big. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. I, I think um, absolutely. I mean, you don't what you don't want to have to do is have judgment around the acts that you're taking, right? Yeah. And feel bad about that you can't, you know, you just can't do something. And so whatever it is that you're that you're choosing to do, if like you said, Julie, if the intention around it is to be as supportive and as nourishing and nurturing as you possibly can, you know, with that you know, with the love in your heart, I don't really think you can go wrong. You know, you just can't, your animal will know that, they'll, they'll ingest it differently, who knows how that. And I think know. it keeps the flow going so that you don't get stuck in just feeding, okay, well, I've fed him raw, I've been feeding him dry now and he's doing fine, so now I'm not gonna put him back on raw, right? So that every moment intention and that every moment of understanding that this is what I'm gonna do the best, I'm doing the best I can in this moment, and then at the next moment, literally the next day, you've got some chicken to add to it. It's like, okay, then you're doing the best in that moment. And then I think it just keeps that positive energy moving. So right. that you can, you, you know, you can ebb and flow with, with doing your best. Yeah. Right? I think the key, the key word that comes up for me in all situations is the word flexibility. Mm, you know, yeah. to, be, to be able to be nutritionally flexible, metabolically flexible, physically flexible, spiritually flexible, you know, mentally flexible, just to be able to kind of ebb and flow through things. Yeah, that's a good word. You that's know, I just, it's okay. One day it may not be, the next day it may be better. And it's not, not to have an attachment, yeah. you know, to that and just let it flow. Yeah. And I think it's, e it's easy to love our animals. You know, it just, it's, it's really easy to love them. Yeah, you know, it's and, and, you know, know, built in, in, in that structure. It's almost like then it becomes so overwhelming that, that you close yourself off. Yeah, I 100% I agree. There's some really great comments here. Uh, Sharon says, thank you both so much. There's so much to think about. Tiffany says, wonderfully deep and enlightening conversation. Thank you. And Sarah said, it's a lovely talk. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us tonight, Dr. Barry and Julie. That was an did awesome. You, did you put Dr. Barry's um, contact in the chat? I absolutely did. And it's Dr. I want to put, put it on our website because I'm so excited about this that I think that it's it's what has to happen. That 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 connection is a big part of the of the of the tools that we need that we don't see often enough. Yeah, yeah, you know, and I think even even more so now with the state of, you know, the global situation that we're all in, it's, it's now is, it's, it's the time to, to shift our consciousness and it's the time to change our awareness and to show up in those, in, in, that, in that more loving, compassionate way for ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, as for everybody around us, it's it's the, it's the the world is shifting. You know, and and I feel like you know the healers are, are are a huge part of that. You know, to create that global wellness and to get everybody else you know on board and feel comfortable. You know, doing that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm just grateful for everybody that, that that attended and wanted to come. You know, hear what I had to say. Hope oh, it was it was, an, it was incredible. It's gonna go on YouTube, and I'm gonna really try and push this on YouTube because I think it's so, in, it's so amazing with people that have your background and is in the real like trenches of the science and the traumas and the like, you know, emergency care that you can, you can bring that along because for the people that are already drinking the Kool-Aid, you know, for the people that have been, you know, following me for 20 years and, 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 we're already there it's just a it's a breath of fresh air to hear that but what I also feel is that for the people that are sort of sitting on the fence and they, they want it so bad seeing the science seeing it being integrated in that way it just helped it just 
helps hold their hand to, to just make that next step, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm still, you know, considered, even though I'm part of the emergency, you know, critical care panel, or, you know, the doctors that are there, my holistic practice is still sort of a, it's, I'm still like the black sheep of the family, <laughs> kind of speak, and, and, but you know what, I have, I just, I just do what I do, and they see the results. They yeah. may not want to recognize it and acknowledge it outwardly, you know, but secretly they're all talking about it. You know, like these classic yeah. case, well, I call them the closet case holistic people, you know, the, the doctors, they, they, they secretly come to me and they say, okay, well, there's this herb, I, can, you, can you recommend something for my dog and, you know, it, or something like that. But little by little, you know, it's, it, it's it, it'll be, we'll see what happens. You know, the, the Western mindset and the, and all the medicine is going to change. Doc, human doctors, animal doctors, it's just going to be a whole different mode of healing that's yeah. going to take place all yeah. over, you know, because yeah. of, because we're just going to realize that, you know, the, the way our system was set up is not sustainable anymore. It's really not. Dr. Barry, you're not a black sheep in this community. No. You're our people. You're a bright, be you're a bright beacon. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and thank you so much, both of you, for sharing tools that we can implement today by just being more mindful and slowing down a bit and, and breathing. And, spe and spreading the love, really. In, um, Every day. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Awesome session, ladies. Thank you so, so much for joining us tonight. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye, Every Dr. Thanks so much. Have a good Bye. night, everyone. Good night. Bye.